Okay, next I'm going to show you how to work with takes and comping in Reaper. Now the purpose of takes is to record many different options and then choose either line by line or phrase by phrase the best possible pieces. This way our final performances can be their best. But before we get started, let's take a look at the options menu. Right over here, by default, this is turned on. So new recording that overlaps or goes on top of previous recordings is gonna make a new take. And this is on by default. So if you switch yours to any other options, make sure this is turned on for this video or for when you wanna record takes. Also, make sure this is on. It's also on by default. Show all takes and lanes. It makes it a bit easier to work with takes. So let's record some takes. For this tutorial, I'm going to use an acoustic guitar, but it could be anything. It could be a vocal, it could be a guitar solo, anything you want to record multiple passes to get the best performance. So let's go into record and let's record a few passes. We'll keep it short. Now, if we record again on top, it's going to create a new take. So now we have two takes. Take one and take two. Now let's record another. Now we have three takes. And we can choose which take we hear just by clicking on it. Take one out of three. We can see it right here. Take one out of three. Take two out of three. And take three out of three. And when you select it, it gets a bit brighter. So we can see which take is actually playing. Now when you choose the takes, by default, as we click in our items, the edit or the play cursor moves as well. But when I'm dealing with takes, I like to change that. And we can change that using mouse modifiers. Let's go to our preferences. If we go down to editing behavior and choose mouse modifiers, under the context media item and left click, we could change the default behavior to instead of selecting item and moving the edit cursor, it could just select the item. And this will make it easier for dealing with takes. Because now we could choose our takes and our edit cursor or our play cursor doesn't move. So now we're here in take one. Let's get out of record. Now we're here in take two. And now we're here in take three. Pretty simple. Now we don't have to view this in lanes. These are considered lanes. We can go to the options menu and turn off show all taken lanes. And if we do that, it looks like this. We didn't lose our takes. We can still see them. This is take three of three, but we can scroll through them by selecting it and right clicking. Go to take and choose next take. And we can see there's a keystroke that'll move to the next take. It's the letter T. So we can select this, hit T, goes back to take one, take two, or take three. So we don't have to see the lanes if we don't want to. But let's go back to our lanes. I find it easier to see. Now, if you look at the end here, it's a little bit messy. Let's zoom in. That's because we punched out at different times. So the take lengths are different. But we can clean that up by selecting them and just deleting them. And then trimming this out. Now, if you notice, each item is looping. That's on by default in our preferences. But we can just change that by selecting it, right clicking, and turn looping off. And now the items won't loop. So now we can trim it to where it really ends over here. Now we could also record using takes in loop mode if the artist prefers to work that way. So let's set up a loop from bar two 
to bar 4. We'll make sure looping is turned on right here. And now if we go into record, it's going to loop and record new takes on each cycle. So let's go into record again. So if your artist prefers to work this way, you can record in loop mode and then pick the best take later on. Now this take isn't a complete take, so let's select it, right click it, go to take, and delete the active take, which was that one. Let's get rid of this piece. And now we're back to the three complete takes. So again, we could choose them by selecting them, and if we play it, we're here in take one, take two, and take three. So now we can choose phrase by phrase what we want to keep. Now again, for acoustic guitar, this may not be necessary, but if you're doing vocals or a guitar solo or a string part, you might want to cut it up phrase by phrase. So let's do that. Let's get out of record. And let's split these up into different phrases. But before we do that, if we click over here and hit S, it's going to split our items. But it creates a fade out and a fade in. What I prefer to do for dealing with takes is to create a crossfade. So let's undo that, go to our preferences, and go to media item defaults and turn on overlap and crossfade items when splitting. It's set to 10 milliseconds, which is fine for now. So now if we split our items, hit S, it creates a crossfade. So we're not going to hear a sound change or any glitching as we go from take to take. So let's split each one of these sections into different phrases. That should be enough. So now we can comp phrase by phrase or note by note to create the best performance. So we can listen to the first phrase of each pass. Take two, take three, and then decide which one we like. Let's say we like this one. Then we go to the second phrase and choose the best take there. And what this does for us is it allows us to hear it in context, which is how I prefer to work when comping a vocal or guitar solo or any important part because you want to hear the good take on this side as you're listening to the new options. So listen to take one. We're here in take one, going to take one. Choose this one. We're here in take one, going to take two. It makes our decision making a lot more efficient. So let's say we like this take, this one, this one, and so on. And these are the takes based on each phrase that makes up the best performance. Now we want to save it. So we have a few different options. One option is to lock it. Let's double click over here, which selects all the items, and that's important. We have to select them all. Then right click over here, go to take, and choose lock to active take. If we choose this, we can no longer switch our takes by clicking on them. The active takes we chose stay the same. Now this only works for clicking. If we use T, we can still switch the takes. Locking them only matters for clicking. So you don't accidentally click and switch takes, which is very easy to do. If they're unlocked, It's very easy to click over here and lose our keeper takes. So we don't want to do that. Another option is to crop to active take. Let's select them all again, go to take, and choose crop to active take. This is going to get rid of all the other takes and just keep the good ones. This is a good option if you're sure that you don't want to recomp this. 
You want this to be the keep or take. But if you don't want to commit just yet, there's a few other options. Let's undo that. Another option is to use comps or compilations. Let's select them again, right click, and go to comps. We can go over here and choose Save as New Comp. We could give it a name, we'll call it Comp 1. And now this comp or compilation is saved. So if we click and lose it or change it, we can always go back by selecting them, right click, go to our comps, and go back to Comp 1. And it's recalled. This is a great option if you want to comp a few times. Maybe one person wants to run through and get the best possible comp. Maybe you want to go back and redo it. So maybe you choose this, 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 and this as the keeper lines. Just double click it, save it. We'll name it Comp 2. And then we can compare it by right clicking, go to Comp 1, listen back to it and go to Comp 2 and compare the differences. And then if you're happy and you're sure you want to make it permanent, just crop to the active take. And it looks like this. Notice there's no more takes to choose from. But let's undo that. And also note, when using comps, we could also get rid of the lanes. We could still comp this way. This is take three, take one, two, or three, back to take one, and we could save this comp the same way. Right click, go to comps, save as new comp. And we could still switch them right from here. Comp one, comp two, or comp three, and they switch to what you saved. And then if you're done, and you don't want to keep those comps, crop to active take, and it gets rid of the unwanted takes. Now because we split them, we can adjust our takes, or the crossfade, by holding down shift and move it around. So we can readjust our phrases, or where they switch, So that's pretty much it. That's working with takes and comping in Reaper. Let's move on. Mom.